common question in the fan industry is, should I get a V-belt fan or should I get a direct drive fan? And these two different types of drives are the most common ways to drive your industrial fan. So if we look at them real quick, a V-belt fan looks like this. You've got your fan there, you've got your pedestal. Again, this is all coming back towards us right now. And then off the shaft of the fan here, we have a shiv that runs belts down to another shiv that is connected to your motor. So say you have this little motor down here, little cast iron wings there. So you got this V-belt drive driving this fan and the argument is, should I use that or should I do a direct drive fan? Which is a direct drive fan. Uh, looks, there's a couple different ways it can look. I'll draw the arrangement for first. You got your big fan right here, wheel on the inside, inlet over here. It's just dynamite artistic work. And then a motor hanging off the pedestal with a shaft that comes right in onto the wheel. This is an arrangement for design drawn on a whiteboard. All right. Another type of direct drive fan, arrangement eight, you'd have the motor just slid back here. The shaft would go a little bit further. You'd have two bearings like this, and you'd direct couple it. A lot of times you do that instead of an arrangement four for reasons like higher horsepower, or maybe uh, you have temperature in the fan that, that can't reach the motor bearings. Okay, so the two most common drives here, V-belt or direct drive. Is, and the question being asked is, is a V-belt drive good for your fan application. Now to answer that, I just gotta ask, why would we do a V-belt drive to begin with? And, and the common assumption of why someone would maybe say V-belt drives are good is that they say, well, I want the options to change my speed. Let's say I plug this thing in and it's belted for 2,250 RPM, and I find out that I'm 10% short on what I need for my volume, and I still got like 30% available in the motor, I wanna be able to go down to my local machine shop, I wanna grab a new V-belt drive, I wanna put new shivs on, and I wanna run that thing 10% faster so I get my flow. That was a common reason for why you'd want a V-belt drive. Another reason is, well, I wanna protect my motor, which is typically your most expensive spare part asset on a fan, I wanna protect it from potential problems that could happen to the fan. I don't want those problems happening in the wheel, bearings. I don't want to have to replace my motor, so I'm going to protect it with this V-belt drive. So those are two common reasons. A third one maybe would be you're moving a really abrasive thing through the fans. So you're planning to move material and stuff, and you really want to protect your motor from that. You want to isolate the motor from maybe the vibrations that are happening within the fan that are expected, and so you put this on a separate base altogether, your motor. So those are the common reasons that I hear for why I want a V-belt. So I guess my question is, which of those reasons do variable frequency drives not fix? If your reason for a V-belt drive is that you want to be able to vary the speed of the fan, that's exactly what a variable frequency drive does. So my, my personal view is that our V-belt drives good for fans. I see a lot more negatives than positives. Let me just explain this a little bit. Every time you put a V-belt on a fan, you're going to get a loss. And the loss I'm referring to is, you got horsepower coming out from your motor. You want, if you want to run an efficient process, you want all the horsepower being generated by the motor passed directly into the fan wheel. You don't want to lose any of it. V-belts will make you lose some of it. I mean, a rule of thumb, three to 6% of your horsepower being put out from the motor horsepower is lost in the transition from the motor shaft to the fan shaft due to the belt. That's number one reason for why I see you're gonna lose some of your motor trend or your motor horsepower transfer. Number two, think about the parts. You got a bushing on the motor shaft, a shiv on the motor shaft, the individual belts themselves. You might have up to 10, 12 belts. You might have a big banded belt. You got another shiv on the motor shaft, and you have a mo I'm sorry, on the fan shaft, and you have a bushing on the fan shaft. So you have five components, two bushings, two shivs, 
and then the belts. That makes up the belt drive. And then you've got, you always have to have a belt and two, I'm sorry, a shaft and two bearings when you do a V-belt drive. So if you're gonna go with a V-belt drive, your maintenance components will be bushing, shiv, belts, shiv, bushing, shaft, bearings. You will have those parts. You can go to an arrangement four if it works within the fan's technology. You can go to an arrangement four and you have a motor. So you don't have to grease fan bearings, check the tightness of the belts, because the belts will get loose over time. You need to get back in, check the tension, make sure it's within the tension parameters set forth by your fan drawing. And you're constantly going to have to be messing with these belts. So there's far less maintenance to go to an arrangement for. So if you have less maintenance, I guess the, the only concerns would be, well, how do I vary my speed? If you put a variable frequency drive on, you can do that. So now the only issue is your concern, maybe putting my motor right on the fan wheel is going to potentially have my motor fail if I've got a problem inside the fan. Well, again, you can take care of that issue by moving the motor away to an arrangement eight coupled drive where you have a coupling bearing shaft. I know now you've got a couple of extra parts you have to maintain, but you still have a lot less parts in the motor or than the V-belt drive and you don't have any loss associated with it from the motor transput through to the wheel. So I guess my answer to our V-belt drives good for fans, it depends on your application, but by and large, I would say with current technology, your ability to vary the speed of the motor through varied frequency, I just don't see a whole lot of benefit to it.